Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our series in Profile Manager. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about users and groups and how we manage uh, people and the groups that you put them into. So anything that you set up on your accounts here on the side, the users you set up and the groups you set up, we're going to talk about how you can manage those things using Profile Manager. Now, for those of you that may be coming into this video midstream, you're going to want to catch up on uh, the other videos that I did because I already did videos on setting up Profile Manager and enrolling your Macs and your iOS devices. Uh, I'll try to put some links down in the show notes. Otherwise, you can go to my channel and you'll see a playlist on the right-hand side that deals with Profile Manager. So that way you can be caught up to where we're at. So as you can see on the screen here, we're back into Profile Manager. It's a service is on. It's got a green dot. Everything's fine. Uh, if you remember last time, I showed you that if you click this link right here, it would that's what would take you to the portal to help you set up your devices and enroll your devices and things. And so that's what we covered last time. And then this link down here, if you click that, opens up Profile Manager, which again is a web interface uh, that allows you to manage these things. And the beauty of Profile Manager is the fact that we've got uh, industrial strength uh, kind of management, things that system system uh, managers and things do in companies uh, available to us even as home users and so it really is a powerful system once you get it set up and going. So let me, uh, you just click on this link to bring it up. I've already got it live so I'm just going to pull it up myself right here and uh, this is what the screen looks like. Now when you get to your uh, particular profile manager it's going to ask you to log in. I, I've already done that just for time uh, but you'll notice it looks very Mac like. You've got your kind of library and things on the side. You've got your second level of things. This in, in particular is our groups so whatever's clicked here it changes this and then on the side here you've got the different uh, activities and, and information for whatever you've clicked on the side here and so you can see it's pretty uh, pretty easy to set up and to manage now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the users here for a second because uh, I want to show you how this works so you can see all of my users are in here and these are the same users that I've got in the server app so anything that I have put uh, into this area here is going to actually show up now right here okay so that's how that works and any groups I've put over here is what's going to show up over here so all of that is started and managed by the uh, by the actual server itself the server app itself so let me put that down uh, so now let me walk through uh, first off kind of what this looks like uh, when you pull up users and so here's uh, again my the users in my server and so for this particular user you've got a profile and you see it says general okay because this is just a general profile sent out for this person and I could for each um, different individual or user I've got in here I could edit a profile so if I just click edit it, it'll bring up this nice uh, edit screen here for the various settings and I've got all of these opportunity to edit all of these different things by on a user basis and you'll notice it has things that affect both uh, Mac OS and iOS in other words that's a Mac computer or, or an iOS device like an iPhone or iPad I've got also in here uh, things that only affect iOS, which is basically your iPads, your iPhones, uh, that kind of thing. And then things that only affect OS 10, which is basically your Macs. And so I could go through and configure all of these things. And you see that I haven't configured really any of them except for this one. And that's just the fact that they're going to receive automatic push notifications from me to the devices they're logged into. And you notice it calls each of these a payload. And it says one payload is configured, and that's how that is sent out. So I could go through and, and cover all these, but what I'm going to do is cover them in the groups area because I think the groups uh, setup is a lot easier to manage especially when you've got a lot of users that are similar uh, like if you've got a household for a full of kids you can do a profile just for the kids so I'm going to show you how all these things work inside there so I'm just going to cancel this for now and let me just walk through these tabs so that's our profile so any profiles we've got on this user would show up here then I've got devices and these are any devices that are linked to this particular individual so when that person logs into the my devices screen and enrolls a device and they're logged in it automatically links that person to that device and so that's how those show up there and you'll notice down here I can I can hit a plus to add a device uh, I can come in here and on any of the devices I can lock them I can clear the passcode on them I can wipe them uh, update info that kind of stuff uh, so it really uh, it, it allows me to do a lot of things right from here and again because this is a web browser I can pull it up on any computer and manage it uh, the next tab here is activity and so that's any activity if I had pushed uh, different uh, services and things uh, in that direction it would show those things that have happened on here whether they succeeded or failed or were still pending so that tracks that 
Uh, I'll show you that a little bit in the groups area. I've got an about section which gives me more information on the user, whether the user can enable remote management, so are they an admin or not, and then what groups this particular person is in. And then I can add apps, and, and basically apps are just things that I've created that I want to add onto their devices or have attached to the users. And so as a home user, you're probably not going to use this too much, so I'm not really going to cover it uh, in this session, but just know that it's there and it is an option. Now, let's go over here to the users uh, area, uh, the groups area, I mean, because this is where I think you'll probably want to do most of your management. Now, if you look here, under my groups, I've got everyone, kids profile, and work group. And again, just to give you a feel, if I was to show you here on my groups, you can see that I've got a kids profile right here, and I've got work group right here. Everyone always shows up. That one you don't have to have uh, over here. That's always going to show up because it's just, hey, they give you that as a default for everyone that's in there in a group. Uh, but otherwise, whatever uh, signed up here is what comes over here. And so I can uh, actually uh, even edit some of the services that these have access to right on here and check different things. And so I've checked Profile Manager on this particular group, even though I can still manage it in the application. But it just shows you that you have different options to manage these things in different areas. So let me just uh, pull back to this. So again, as you look, let me just look at the kids profile for a second. And you can see under my kids profile, I've got the different members here. And then I've got general settings like you saw on the other user, but then I've got restrictions. And these are basically parental controls for iOS devices. And I've got parental controls itself, which is basically for Mac devices. And I can edit these things, which I'm going to do in a minute just to show you how you can fix those things. Now, all of these profiles, once accepted by the different members on their devices, are, are in effect for all of the members of this particular group. So that's why it's a lot easier. You set it once, and then it affects everybody. Uh, let's just go through these tabs on the on the groups area, and then I'll go into more detail. Uh, you have your members of the group, so it lists who those people are. You have any activities, again, like before, and you can see here that you've got activities like push settings and updating info, and it'll tell you if it succeeded or not. You can see I canceled a couple here, and two of them failed because the uh, because I had canceled the profile. These succeeded. It tells you kind of when those things were pushed. So it gives you kind of a nice record to see what changes you've made for that particular group. I've got an About section here, which, again, just gives me a little bit more information about the group, and then finally an App section, which, like I said before, is blank because we're not going to use it. So let's go in right now and let's take a look at this profile and take a look at some of the things that we can edit. And what I'm going to do is show you the things you're most likely to edit. I won't go through every single detail. Um, you've got a passcode here that you can use. You can set up passcode rules. Just click configure and you can set up how you want them to use their passcode. Whether you want it to expire over a period of time, how many characters you want it to be, whatever that is, once you push that, then they're going to have to make their password fit whatever parameters you've set. And you'll notice it adds a payload and then we can move on. Okay. Uh, the next is mail, which should be set up uh, normally through, uh, if you've got mail set up, it'll push that profile over here. Uh, we don't, so we don't have to worry about that. But if you want to look real quick, you can configure your mail uh, kind of with more detail the way you want to do it. Those of you that are used to Lion Server with uh, the things that you had available in the server admin app, which no longer exists, a lot of that information is in here for you to set up. Uh, you can set up Exchange if you've got that. Uh, you can set up LDAP if you want, which is basically your open directory structure. Uh, you won't need to do that. You can set up your contacts. Again, real simple, setting it up this way with your different information, your calendars, uh, your network. So you can do network settings uh, on for this, these particular groups where you can say, hey, uh, here's my Wi-Fi network, here's the SSID, and uh, I want them to auto-join when they get in there, and here's the password. And then basically it will configure their devices to allow them to automatically log into your Wi-Fi. So they don't have to put anything in there, you've already configured it, which makes it really convenient. Uh, VPN, the same kind of thing if I configured that. Uh, you've got all the info here that we've talked about in the VPN tutorial. You've got it all here just in a different layout. Uh, you've got this, a certificate uh, if you need it. Again, as a home user, you probably won't, so we're just going to leave that alone. Um, uh, the, uh, SE, the SCEP, again, is more of a um, business kind of thing. You don't need that. Uh, you can set up web clips if you wanted to, where you'd have web clips that uh, you could set up to have show up on their devices as an app. You can even put in the actual logo here, uh, or on their um, on their Mac. You can have it set up uh, on there as well. So uh, it gives you the ability to do some of that stuff if you have those available. Again, much more likely to be used in a corporate environment. I might uh, do a tutorial on it later, but right now I'm just going to leave that alone.
Uh, and then you've got security and privacy that relates to both iOS and Mac, where you can either you can send diagnostics to Apple or not, and you can say don't allow users to override Gatekeeper if you don't want them downloading apps that aren't approved by Apple's Gatekeeper program. So that allow that's what you can set up for both iOS and the Mac. Now let's look at iOS for a second. You see restrictions, and like I said, this is basically parental controls. Uh, for iOS devices. So I can I can disallow any of these services over here just by unchecking them and it'll take them off. So if I say, you know, I don't want them to use Siri anymore, when I click that it actually takes Siri off. You won't even be able to see it on the device. So uh, same thing with PhotoStream and those kinds of things. It just takes the application off and they can no longer use it. So it's a great way to kind of customize those installs. Uh, you also have applications and uh, you can check off things that you don't want them to see. If you don't want them to use iTunes Music Store, you check that off and the app is no longer there. Uh, then you can also look at media content and you can set all your ratings and things right here for what they can and can't see on their device. And again, if you've got kids, this is a great idea. It's a great way to kind of set up uh, what content you will uh, allow them to view. Uh, you can take off explicit music and podcasts. And the great thing, you take this off, those things still show in the iTunes store, but they're grayed out so that you, they, there's no possibility to buy them. It just won't let them actually purchase them or do anything with it. So that's that's a great way to set up parental controls. Uh, you got a global proxy. You won't use that really uh, as a home user. Subscribe calendars. If you had a calendar you wanted everybody to subscribe to, you've got it there. Uh, and then you've got the access point name if you've got that kind of a setup in your house where you have access points, which again, most home users won't, so I won't even cover that in a lot of detail. Uh, finally, you got an OS 10, and so this is for your Macs. And in configuring your Macs, you can configure things like their identification, so what username and password and all that stuff uh, is for this particular individual or group. You can put that information in there, and that's what they would use to uh, log in, would show their identification. You've got restrictions here as well. Let me just show you that, where you can restrict uh, everything on their desktop. You can say system preference wise, the, the, they can only look at a couple of things and I'm going to uncheck the ones that I don't want them to have. Uh, you can also do the same thing with applications. You can say, hey, I don't want them downloading new software so they can only do updates through the App Store. Or, you know, these are applications I want to uh, launch, uh, allow at launch. You can have applications that you allow and folders you allow and different folders that you don't allow that you don't want them to have. Again, it really allows you to customize uh, the Mac setup for whatever group you're working with. Uh, uh, you can say allow uh, only the following dashboard wid widgets to run, otherwise you allow access to any of them. And then with media, you can again say whether they're allowed to use AirDrop or certain disks and things like that. So again, if you don't want them to access certain disks that might be attached to your computer, you want to keep those private, you can check that off here on external disks and say read only uh, so they can't mess with it or require authentication so they'd have to log in. And that keeps those things a little bit more secure. So that's kind of a neat uh, setup as well. Again, you got messages that you can set up, uh, AD certificate, you don't have to worry about that. That's for Active Directory. Uh, as a home user, you're not having to worry about that because you're using Open Directory. This is more um, in setups where you have multiple servers uh, or you're also maybe blending a Windows environment with a Mac environment. Uh, you got login items that you can customize, and so you can again customize what applications st uh, start, uh, are, you know, are, are shown or hidden, what items are hidden. You can even say network mounts, things that you want to have mounted right away when it loads up. If you remember my tutorial on AFP, uh, where I showed you how to auto mount different shares, uh, you could actually put in the shares you want to auto mount here. It'll push that um, setting to your users, and when they reboot their computer, then those shares on your server will automatically load on their computer in their sidebar. So that's another way that you can do that. Uh, you've got mobility accounts, which I'm going to talk about later. Uh, that basically just allows you for those that have laptops in their home folders or on your server, it will actually sync the home folder to the computer. They can go use it outside, and then any changes they make when they come back into the environment, it syncs it back. So I'm going to cover that in more detail uh, in a later screencast. You can also configure their dock and uh, how the dock operates, what applications you want on the dock, those kinds of things. Makes it really nice uh, to be able to do that. Uh, you can configure your printer and get your printer all set up and how you want the printer to work. Uh, parental controls, just like you've seen elsewhere where you're, you can hide profanity. I put in some URLs here just for fun uh, to show you you can deny certain URLs. Obviously, I wouldn't want to deny YouTube or you wouldn't be watching this video. Uh, but you can deny those kinds of things in here and you can set time limits for your kids here as well. Now, uh, one thing to be aware of is uh, there have been some issues where sometimes the parental controls takes over the admin account. Uh, I haven't had that happen, but it has happened from time to time. So you may, if you have 
that problem need to remove profiles and manage them by devices instead of through the groups or individual settings. Uh, your mileage may vary but check that out and see what you can uh, make work. And then finally you got custom settings if you wanted to add anything into there custom wise which again that's a little bit more enterprise uh, kind of a situation most home users wouldn't need it. So that gives you a good tour of that. You would basically just click OK and all those profiles would be loaded and they would be pushed to your devices since we have put up uh, push settings. I'm going to cancel them because I'm just going to leave my uh, setup alone. Uh, but uh, anyways, that gives you a, a basic tour now of the users and groups section of Profile Manager. So hopefully that helps you get that up and running. So that's all I have for you this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.